let's now analyze the life cycle of a TypeScript program. And to understand how TypeScript works and runs, we first need to know how JavaScript works and uh, executes since TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. Well, for JavaScript programming, we as a developers, we write JavaScript code and then a JavaScript runtime will execute that code. Two of the most important JavaScript runtimes are the Node.js uh, environment and most modern browsers. This is the way JavaScript works. Well, let's now think about TypeScript and the process for TypeScript is fairly similar since we as developers write code, but not JavaScript. But in the end, we will have JavaScript code and that code can be executed in both Node.js browser or any other JavaScript runtime. Well, the key difference right here is that we have an important extra step. That extra step is the TypeScript compilation. Well, we write as developers TypeScript code and then the TypeScript compiler will take TypeScript code and generate, compile or transpile that code into JavaScript code. This is basically the life cycle of a TypeScript program. Well, let's think about why we need these extra steps. Why we already, isn't JavaScript already enough complicated? Isn't programming enough complicated? Well, why the extra steps? Let's say that uh, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, as I said in the beginning. And uh, this means that it has all the features of JavaScript. Any JavaScript code is valid TypeScript code, but it brings something very important new to the table. Some uh, very important new features uh, that are uh, added to JavaScript inside TypeScript. And the most important feature, and as uh, the name suggests, is a type system. Basically, with TypeScript, we can uh, inspect or we can instruct our programs to accept only a certain shape of our data. This is what was missing inside JavaScript the most and TypeScript brings this new to the table. The way we can shape our objects. It, TypeScript brings other uh, features like generics, like advanced support for OOP and uh, classes, decorators and so on. We will talk about all these features inside this uh, course. And the great thing about TypeScript and JavaScript is that uh, you can learn JavaScript along the way as you are learning TypeScript. At least if you know the very basics of JavaScript, then you can also learn TypeScript. And another cool feature of uh, TypeScript is that we can compile or transpile our code into multiple targets. Well, what uh, does this even mean? Well, JavaScript and TypeScript are, all, are always evolving. And uh, this means that there are always new features added to the program. That's great for us developers, but that's not so great for those who execute those programs, the being no, the Node.js environment or most importantly, web browsers. And web browsers don't usually keep up so uh, fast with the new features inside the JavaScript and TypeScript. But if we use TypeScript, we can use the very latest features of JavaScript and TypeScript, but we can then compile our code into old or old versions of our code, which can be understood by old runtimes. This is another important feature of TypeScript. And let's talk about this, uh, the most important TypeScript feature, the type system checks. Let's talk about this compile time and these type checks. Currently, I, I have a small chunk of code on the screen. As you can see, here we have a shape of the argument of uh, the print name function here at line uh, three. And this dump function with a dump example, I really don't like them, but I just want to make a point. This function right here accepts an argument which is of type with name. And this with name simply requires a field with the name name and the type of the value should be string. Well, if we are not careful and we are calling this function with a argument which doesn't have a name, maybe we have a typo right here and instead of name we say names, then we will have a compilation error. Again, if we are calling this function with the name field, but not with a string right here, but with a number, again, we will have a compilation error. And these compilations, uh, compilation errors are 
caught at compile time. But basically, the TypeScript compiler will run the compiler and will notify us, hey, you have some problems in your code. But uh, most importantly, most modern IDEs call a uh, lightweight version of the TypeScript compiler in the background. That's why we will see this kind of uh, red syntax highlighting when we have compilation problems inside our code. This means that this compile time and uh, write time usually are the same. And uh, most modern IDEs will uh, warn us or even won't let us run our code until we fix these uh, problems. Let's see all of this and into the next lecture where we will write our first TypeScript program and then we will see how we can execute it. So it's time for us to write and run our very first TypeScript program. So in this lecture, we will write, we will compile, and then we will run a very basic TypeScript program. And in the end, we will see other ways in which we can execute TypeScript. So let me switch to the workspace. And I have opened VS Code inside an empty directory. You can use anything you like, as I said uh, before. And right here, I will create a new file and I will call it first.txt. Right here, let's simply create a function. So here I'll say function print name. This function, let's say that receives an argument and simply prints this argument. So here I'll say console log our argument. The dumpest example possible. Let's also give a shape to that, that argument. So here I'll say type with name and this with name will receive a name of type string. And let's just say that our argument right here is of type with name. At this point, we have access to the fields of this argument. And this is one of the key features of IDs I will be using inside this course. This is called IntelliSense. And now if we have a shape, if we defined a shape inside this function, then VS Code or any uh, modern IDE will give us some IntelliSense. This is very handy for complex projects, of course. Well, simply we can print out that, that name and uh, let's say right here, call this function. Let's print this name with an object that has a name, John, something like this. All right, this is our very first program. So in order to run it, I will open a terminal inside this folder. You can use any terminal you like. And in order to compile this code, we will call the TypeScript compiler. And if you remember, since we installed it, the TypeScript compiler can be called with TSC and then the name of the file. So TSC, oh, I have a typo right here. I will rename it to first.ts. And I have called the compiler. The compiler simply generated a JavaScript file. And if we will open this JavaScript file and we will put this side to side, you will see that we have the exact same thing, the function definition and the invocation, but without the types. And uh, this way you understand that these type annotations, this type definition right here and this type annotation right here, they exist only in TypeScript files. In JavaScript, they are not a feature. And when we are calling the compiler, these type annotations and these type definitions will simply be removed since they won't be needed anymore at runtime. So if we want to execute this code, we can simply call right here node and then our first.js. And then simply we see our log so everything works as it should. If we want to run this JavaScript file inside a web browser, we can simply reference, reference it inside a web browser. So for this, I will create a new file and I will call this index.html and I will quickly put some HTML right here. I will use some emmet abbreviation. Basically, this is a very basic uh, HTML and inside the body, I will add a script with the source will be our first.js. Let me open this index.html inside a web browser. I hope I have opened this uh, index.html inside a web browser. And as you can see, we also see our log. One uh, big advantage of running JavaScript inside the web browsers is that they will give much prettier logs. So later on, we will, where we will uh, be interested, very interested in uh, more complex logs, we will write our or we will run our 
JavaScript files inside the web browsers. This is a, an important uh, feature besides Node. Well, let's uh, in the last part of this uh, lecture, let's see two other ways in which we can execute TypeScript code. Well, if we have this TypeScript file right here, I have an error, but this is nothing related to the implementation. I will simply close that file and everything will be all right. A more straightforward way in which we can execute TypeScript code is with a library called TSNode. And this library will help us directly execute TypeScript. I can install it with uh, npm install as a global dependency and the library is called ts node like this. I have installed it and now we can simply call ts minus node and we will call our first dot ts and ts node is directly able to execute TypeScript code. Well, it and in the background it will simply compile it, but for us it will be just one step. Many times in the course I will also execute TypeScript this way with TS node because this is a more straightforward way in which we can execute TypeScript. And one last point in which you can execute TypeScript is a very cool resource on the internet. I will open a browser and I'm currently on a website called the TypeScript Playground. Basically is the official website of TypeScript slash play and this is called the TypeScript Playground. Right here directly inside your browser, you can write and execute TypeScript code. For example, again, we have right here a variable. I can even uh, change it right here. And then I can simply call run. And as you can see, I have the log right here. This is a very cool um, resource if you want to uh, run different versions of uh, TypeScript and uh, observe the way they are uh, transpiled right here. This uh, resource will also show us, uh, show us the transpiled JavaScript code, the generated uh, types. We will also talk about this in uh, this uh, course. Well, in this lecture, we saw how we can write and execute TypeScript. Let's proceed into the next lecture and talk about compiler options. Let's now talk in more detail about the TypeScript compiler. And as we know, the TypeScript compiler simply takes, takes TypeScript code and generate JavaScript code from it. Well, pretty simple, but there's a very complex way in which we can configure this compiler because under the hood, it is a very complex system and there are lots of ways in which we can configure it. Well, we can group the ways in which we can configure the TypeScript compiler in two groups. First of all, a set of rules that uh, uh, specify what is accepted as TypeScript code. For example, the way of strictness inside our code. And the other set of rules, they will specify how will the generated JavaScript code look like. And uh, let me tell you from the start, nobody uh, knows how all the options in which we can configure the compiler really work. It is a feature of TypeScript that you will learn over experience. With each option that you try on, you will learn more and more about the TypeScript compiler. And let's see how uh, it works and uh, let's get an introduction. Let's switch to the workspace. So I'm inside my workspace and uh, here I need to generate a tsconfig file. The TypeScript compiler can be uh, configured with a tsconfig file. I can simply create this file manually or I can let the TypeScript compiler create it. I can call tsc minus minus init. And this will generate a tsconfig JSON file. If I will open it, you will see that it is somewhat overwhelming and here you will see a, a, a lot of ways in which the TypeScript compiler can be um, configured. If we don't have any tsconfig.json file, then TypeScript will just take the defaults when it will uh, call the compiler and execute our code. Let's have a quick look at these options. Later in the course, we will have a dedicated section entirely for the compiler options. But let's quickly go over the two most uh, often used and uh, more simpler way in which, which we can uh, configure the compiler. What is the location of the code that TypeScript expects? 
For example, lower down the line, we have an entry called root deer, and let's say that we want all our source code to be into the SRC folder. Even lower down the line, we will have a new entry or a new category called emit, and right here I will there's an option called out directory. And I will say that usually a dist or an out folder is used as an out directory. Well, let me save this tsconfig file and let's move our file into a source folder. So here I'll say I will create a new folder and I will move this folder right here. I will move this file right here. And now let's quickly call the TypeScript compiler again. So I will call tsc and this time the TypeScript compiler was able to look into the source folder and it regenerated a dist folder where it placed our generated file. Another very important point in which we can configure the compiler is by specifying a target. And if we look at this option right here and I will uh, remove it, VS Code will uh, give us some uh, ways in which the compiler or the target version of the JavaScript file can be configured. And this target means the way in which or the version of JavaScript that will be generated. The older ones are ES3 or ES5 and the newer ones are ES6, ES Next. We also have versions based on years. Currently VS Code tells us that ES3 is the default value but usually the ES5 is uh, the default value. If we will uh, specify a newer version that everything will be all right or everything will look um, much nicer. If we specify, for example, an older version. So as target, let's uh, select an older version like ES5. Let's save this. And uh, just uh, for fun, let's uh, make this function an async function. You don't really need to understand right here. Let's just observe the generated code. So I will call TSC now. And if we look now at the generated code, you will see that we get a lot of very, very complicated code because this uh, ES5 is a little older, a little, a little old version. If I will select a newer version right, right here, for example, ES2022, save this and uh, compile again. If we look now at the generated uh, file, you will see that this newer version of JavaScript natively supports this asynchronous code. So this was the way in which the TypeScript compiler um, also configures what comes in as a TypeScript code and also what comes out as JavaScript code. As I said, later on, with the experience, we will learn more and more about the TypeScript compiler and we will have a dedicated section regarding it. You should also remember this source or this uh, folder structure. Usually for all the examples inside this course i will put all the source code inside the source directory and the generated code will live in the dist directory and this being said we have reached the end of this lecture and the end of this introduction section we had the very very setup and basics of typescript let's move on into the next section the second section and uh, let's uh, learn about basic typescript types